Hey guys, uh, we're talking about spirals in the golf swing. Uh, it's certainly nothing new to the golf swing. Uh, there have been a lot of other instructors that have talked about spirals. Many different types of spirals. Uh, for anybody that hasn't done any research on spirals, uh, I would highly suggest you doing that. Uh, you can find spirals all throughout the universe, all throughout the human body, all throughout nature. Uh, they're pretty much everywhere. Uh, so I think that's a really good topic to talk about. Um, something that I use in channel lock, and um, I've never really talked about it much, but it's definitely there in my swing. Um, I, I've seen it through instruction with some of the stuff JH has talked about with Atomic Golf. Uh, he certainly has that spiral in his golf swing. Uh, you know, he talks about augering down and... Um, screwing into the ground well that's just another definition of a spiral so the, the spiral that's created with channel lock is a little bit different and I'm gonna explain why that's different but first of all I'd like to just tell you why I kind of got inspired to do this lesson and uh, I should have talked about it a long time ago but uh, my family is starting a business and we've worked on it for about a year now and it's been a lot of time effort money and back several days ago we had a tornado touchdown on top of our facility and our grand opening was going to be within a few weeks and I did have a family member inside of that building and uh, the tornado uh, the forces of that did try to uh, suck that family member out of the building and luckily they didn't I'm very thankful that didn't happen um, but it destroyed the building and uh, a major setback for my family, but we're gonna keep moving forward and um, do what we have to do to be successful. Um, inside that building, on the top of it, there's some 12 inch uh, steel frames. And uh, so this thing is framed up at the top of it with 12 inch steel, steel uh, rafters and our, our beams. Those beams were rotated 180 degrees. They, were, they turned into a spiral. That shows you the force uh, of nature and the, the force of a spiral. So that kind of motivated me to talk about spirals in the golf swing. Uh, with channel lock, I call this uh, spiral lock. That, that's actually what I'm doing. I'm actually doing a spiral lock. I think channel lock, that's really what it is for me. Uh, the difference is I'm doing it on a pretty much a single axis or as close as I can get to that. Um, if you notice, uh, uh, you're going to see a few videos that are going to, uh, at the end of this, you're going to see a few videos where you'll see how I'm spiraling in the golf swing. You'll see a really tight structure where I'm staying inside this door frame. Um, I'm really working the club from inside to out. And uh, the concentration on this swing is to really spiral all the way through the golf shot. Uh, when I do hit the ball, my shoulders are not open, but I make impact, they open up, and I still spiral. I continue the spiral on the other side. So we're gonna talk about this a lot more in detail, but I'm basically spiraling from the ground up, down, spiral down, and spiral back up. And I, I really want you to pay attention to that in, in the swings you're gonna see. I'm hitting a six iron, I think, in one of the videos and a five iron in the other video and just absolutely striking the ball. Um, and I really focused on that getting through the ball. That's, that was really my intention. But I'm gonna show you what separates this from other spirals. If you watch professional swing, they're all really good at creating a spiral with their body and loading into the shot. Um, the spiral that I'm creating, there's not a lot of weight transfer from side to side, okay? So we know the spiral is common with good golf swings uh, and high level players. So the, the difference in my spiral, I'll spiral up, but with this club, I'm still hinging like I advocate on plane, okay? I'm spiraling up the plane, I'm spiraling back down the plane. Now, what you're gonna see from behind, the images that you see, you see a straight line with this club going up and down the plane. I'm not, I'm not creating a straight line. I never think about straight lines of golf. There, there's really not 
there's really not straight lines in golf. Um, so the spiral that I'm creating creates that look of a straight line of it being on plane. Okay. So this is one of the reasons why I don't like lifting the club or prematurely uh, because if I lift the club, I interrupt the spiral that I'm trying to do. If I was to lift it this way, I'm off of that spiral. So I'm going to have to try to get it back on that spiral to hit the ball. So I want my spiral to take this club up the plane and down the plane. And when you do that, you'll hit the ball better than you've ever hit it in your life. You'll hit it more powerful, you'll hit it effortlessly, and you're gonna hit it um, accurately. So that's the difference. Um, if I was to take the club inside and try to reroute it, um, I'm interfering with that spiral, okay? If I try to come over the top, I'm interfering with that spiral that I do. Now there are a lot of golf swings that uh, swing a little bit over the top. There are a lot of pros that take it to the inside and swing it a little bit over the top, but they're still getting back on that shaft plane. But I feel like there's a little bit of interruption in that spiral. And uh, so uh, when you do this, if you notice, I'm not taking large divots. I'm just clipping the ball right off the turf. I'm compressing the ball. You don't have to be way out in front of the ball with a divot to compress the ball. Okay, uh, if you do see me take a divot, it's usually my lie might not be the best. I may have to hit down on it a little bit more. Um, but I think the wear and tear of that is, is rough on your body, it's rough on your hands, elbows, and it's just simply showing that you're steep into the ball. Okay, professionals do not take super large divots. They're, they're little bacon strip type divots. If you see me take one, that's the way it looks. But, uh, but the low point, to me, to be able to sweep it like that shows that you have total control over the low point of the golf swing. And um, your radius and all that have to be really good, and you have to be spot on. And that's evident with guys that can do that. So uh, just something to think about. This is, I look forward to hearing what JH has to say about this uh, from Atomic Golf. And um, we're going to start discussing some of these things. There's little spirals everywhere in your golf swing. Your knees, your hips, your shoulders. Uh, it, it just goes on and on the list, and we're going to be talking about that. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask, and we'll catch you next time. Now come down five iron. All right, this is what I call the spiral lock. We're gonna be talking about the spiral, the cork screwing into the ground. You can create a lot of speed doing this. And uh, it's a great feeling. This time we're gonna try it with a little auto load. I hadn't done that in a long time, so let's see what happens. I'm hinging, hinging the club in the same fashion. May throw my timing off because I'm not used to it, but let's just see what we can do. Oh my goodness. Guys, that ball's still in the air, still going come down so you can see dead center of the face if you notice there are no divots that you could actually plant something in uh, so I, I think that I'll show you there is some compression on that there's a lot of compression on that ball five iron is carrying a long way and like I said no divots you don't have to have a deep divot on the other side of the ball that is simply meaning you have to get steep on it. And uh, that creates a lot of wear and tear on your shoulders, your arms, your hands. And uh, I don't have any of that. I'm, I'm fixing to be 53 years old and I have, I'm pain-free swinging this way. 
it's a natural way of swinging for me i'm creating a spiral and uh if you notice without the large divots uh, somebody that can hit it like that and compress the ball like that um there, there's just a misconception about compressing the ball the ball can be compressed without taking a large divot um uh, i mean there are no divots there see that and all those balls were flush perfectly now if i have a bad lie I, i'll take a divot or if i do ever take a divot it's, it's going to be like a little bacon strip okay you don't want a deep cratering type divot that is so much wear and tear on the elbows wrist hands your body is going to hurt especially for some of you senior golfers it's just horrible to do that and uh, this this is pain free um, and we're going to be talking about the spiral or the corkscrew another definition for it and uh, jh has been doing this all along i've been doing it all along and uh, we're fixing to share some of this information so catch you next time hey guys we're hitting some six on Working on the spiral. Uh, it's warmed up the temperature here, so all these balls are flying about 215, 210. All of them right on top of each other. All right, we're going to get a little bit more spiral in this and put a little bit more speed in this. And that's right on top of the other ones, just towering, towering golf shots. All right, let's look for divots here. No, nope, don't see no trenches. So... Dead center of the club face, six iron. So doing a little spiral motion there. You can really generate a lot of torque, a lot of speed doing that with a shorter golf swing.